and only mode. Hello and welcome. This is our continuing series of Build Your AutoCAD IQ, welcoming you to the third dimension in introduction to rendering. I'll be your host. My name is Steve Bissett, and our presenter is Victoria Studley, and one of our other moderators is our good friend Nalman, who is one of our expert elites. I'm sure you have seen him within our um, within our forums. Moving along here, we'll uh, go to our next slide about us a little bit. You know, both Victoria and I, we're both technical support specialists here at Autodesk in our Manchester, New Hampshire office. And Nauman, as I had mentioned, is one of our Autodesk elite, expert elites out of Westchester, Cincinnati. Steve, Before are... we get started. Steve. Um, hey, Steve. Did yes, you yes. freeze your screen? I'm not seeing the second slide there. I'm still seeing the front slide. I apologize. Well, we'll go back. We'll go back a few slides here. Pardon me. So here's our first slide, and we'll start here with our second. So, so everybody can see our pictures and know that we are actually real humans and not just robots behind the machine. So before we get started, um, you know, I'm sure you all have received the emails. If you're not, please let us know, and we can see what we can do about getting those out to you. Um, as always. Leave your questions. We're happy to answer whatever we can. Um, we'll answer all the questions as we have time that allows. The session is being recorded. All of our links will be made available after the, afterwards. You know, our registration reminders, our post webinar surveys, things in our chat window. And what we would like to do first is let us start with doing some polls. Terry, would you like to run the polls for me? I think I need to make you our presenter, correct? Okay. So, our first poll. Is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? Oh. Excellent. I'm glad to see that we have an awful lot of return attendees. This is fantastic. Exactly what we'd like. Excellent. So you can see the results, 86%. That's absolutely this is exactly what we'd be looking for. Thank you, everybody, for returning again. Okay, so which AutoCAD-based application do you use? Just select one, AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, or some of our verticals. Well, it looks like we have, you know, so far the numbers are still coming in, but mostly very heavy in AutoCAD, which is fantastic. The Webinar series, the, ses the session we have today will be mostly about rendering, which is all in the core AutoCAD. That's excellent. We also have some architecture, MEP, electrical, mechanical, or plant. That's really good to see, as well as some of our, from our infrastructure, civil and map. Do we have another poll question? Excellent, we do. Um, has anybody ever used any of our 3D modeling or rendering tools? Excellent, we get some great numbers coming in. It looks about half of you have used some 3D modeling or rendering tools within our program, almost 60%. That's excellent. Okay, I think... Uh, Victoria, do we have another question, or is that all the polls we have for right now? I'm just going to show the results for this one right here, about 56% Beautiful. Thank you. have done this before in AutoCAD. Um, there is one more poll, um, so I will uh, launch that one. Excellent. Thank you. And have you ever used cloud rendering? Kind of a new feature in our programs that we've had for the last couple of years. Ninety percent, no. That's that. That's interesting. It's uh, it's definitely something that we'll uh, we'll touch upon today. 
leave it open for a few more seconds here. All right, looks like almost 90% of you have not used our cloud rendering. Good to know. So hopefully after this you'll be more interested in, in attempting to use it. All right, with those polls, we will, uh, let's go back into our actual presentation. I'll reassign myself here. So our previous webinars, I'm sure you've been part of them. Um, you know, what's new in our AutoCAD 2016, uh, the look of our line types, introduction of 3D modeling that Victoria and I did about a month ago, drafting with precision, our constraints, and the mac and cheese taking a look at the AutoCAD from Mac, which was very interesting. And as always, all of our videos are on the YouTube channel, AutoCAD Exchange, Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Here are some of the featured articles that are on our Autodesk network. Um, our top 10, coordination, application modules, service packs, free education software, free file viewers, some quick links, hot fixes, AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT. Hey, Steve. This is a fantastic tool to use. Hey, Steve. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, we're not seeing the screen yes. for the PowerPoint since you switched back. Would you like to display that and run back over those? I ones? certainly can. Absolutely. I apologize for That's that. That's all right. Thank you. All right. Awkward moments, right? Ah, well, everybody makes mistakes once in a while. Volker would be proud. So, yes, I'm sure he would. I'm sure he would. <laughs> so, again, you know, these are our past webinars and our YouTube exchange channel, rolling through our featured articles. I'm sure you guys have seen this often and often and often. Again, I can't express how powerful our knowledge, desk knowledge network is and implore everybody to visit that, um, as well as our forums for additional information, um, whether it's for an issue or something new that you're looking to gain additional education upon. For today, our weeks, uh, our, this week's agenda will include visualization, a little bit of materials, rendering, lights, on how to make your 3D model look lifelike. We'll do some model preparation, again with the materials, lighting, saving the view, and the background lighting and the presets. Again, visualization tools, a ribbon, and the palettes. There's an awful lot of information. Feel free to ask questions. Now and I are here to help you. And uh, Victoria, I will pass this on over to you. Bear with me one second here. All right. All right. Victoria, it is all yours. Thanks, Steve. All right, again, thank you guys for, uh, thank you everybody for showing up today. Um, welcome back to those who've been here before and welcome to anybody who's new. Um, today I'm going to walk through uh, some rendering workflows uh, to help you get started rendering your 3D models in AutoCAD. Um, those of you who joined us a couple of weeks ago, I think it was four weeks ago, um, we went over some basic 3D modeling tools in our 3D, uh, 3D Basics workspace. So down here in the right-hand corner, I'm just going to click this gearbox. I'll show you that 3D Basics workspace. Just as a quick refresher, we went through some of these creation tools and uh, a little bit of the modeling or the uh, modify commands. Um, so down here, if you click on the workspace icon again, we're going to jump over into the 3D modeling workspace. And this has some extra tools here. Um, a little more robust. I like to work in here um, if I'm doing more complex models. Um, what we're going to focus on today, though, is the Visualize tab. So starting here, um, we have the model that we created a couple of weeks ago. We created this uh, table with Steve. And if we rotate it around, you can see we've got a couple of legs, a basic tabletop here with um, a piece in the middle here that is a separate object little inlay. So uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is um, is the uh, this visualize ribbon here. So you have a views manager that will help you, um, as the name suggests, manage your views. So if you click on it, 
Um, you'll see these presets are all of the views that are saved for your view cube over here, which you've been using for uh, navigation up until now. Um, but for modeling, for a, sorry, for rendering, uh, sometimes you need a slightly different view. So you can come in here and save um, a new view uh, to get back to it quickly. So we'll go over that a little more um, later. But just know that that's here, and you can also use the, um, the flyout here to navigate quickly between your views. Um, the next important piece up here is the uh, visual styles panel. So you can quickly switch between your visual styles by clicking on here, and uh, you'll see this flyout. Um, right now, I believe we're in, oh, now we're in conceptual. Uh, we were in realistic, okay. Um, probably a good idea to work in realistic when we're working with rendering. Um, we'll get a nice preview of the materials that way. Um, you can also change that right up here by clicking on this drop down in model space and selecting the uh, visual style that you want. If you want to adjust those visual styles, you can click on the visual styles manager here or you can get to it from this drop down on the ribbon. You can also enter visual styles at the command line. You can see that command right down here if you don't feel like using the ribbon. So you can start with a, uh, let's say, realistic visual style. If you right click on it, you can save a new one, create new visual style. Uh, you can adjust any of these settings in here and we can delve into that uh, in a later um, webinar if there's interest for that. So I'll close this out. The next panel here is your lights. So you can add lights to your, uh, to your model in order to um, cast shadows or illuminate your uh, 3D model in a particular fashion. Um, there are different types of lights, point lights, spotlights, distant lights, web lights. Uh, you can adjust your lighting units and change your exposure and white balance in here as well. You can also display ground shadows or full shadows, shadows against other objects in the model, or you can choose to show no, no shadows at all. You can also set the sun. So you can set it by date and time. You can set it by location. Uh, you can turn it off completely, or um, let me turn it on here for a second. When you click on the sun status, uh, in order to turn it on, you'll get this message the very first time, and it asks you to turn off the default lighting. Uh, this also happens the first time that you add a light to your model. Um, so any kind of uh, user-created light will prompt you to turn off the default lighting. It's a good idea if you are lighting the model in any other way, um, but the default lighting just lets you get a quick render in uh, without having to add any lights. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to skip through this. I'm just going to adjust my exposure settings and say OK. Just so that I can show you. Oh, come on, come back. Oh, keep exposure settings. No, it didn't, it didn't work. OK, I'm sorry. I'm just going to undo here. It didn't do what I was asking it to do. All right. Hmm. Okay, uh, the little arrow down here will open your Sun Properties palette, and you can make all of the adjustments that I just talked about in here. Okay, uh, moving over to the Materials panel here. Um, this will help you manage the materials that you're adding to your objects. Um, say you want something like wood or ceramic or um, glass, you can add those uh, using the tools in this panel. Um, so your materials browser will open your materials browser here and give you a list of default um, materials in your materials library. Uh, you can also create new materials in here as well. Let me close this out for a second. Um, here you can turn on materials and textures. Um, turn on just materials and no textures or keep them both off. 
I'll leave this as the default. And then there are uh, some attachment options in here as well. Uh, here are some camera views. Um, we're not going to get into camera views today. Uh, we're just going to do some simple workflows uh, to get us through um, to the final render. Uh, here on the render tab, you have size options in this flyout. You have your render presets here. You get low, medium, high coffee break, lunch quality, and overnight quality were added in 2016 to try and um, give you a, a, a nice, um, a, well, a solid time frame to render in. So coffee break will give you a 10-minute uh, render. Your lunch quality will give you th 60 minutes. Um, and then overnight quality is either your machine on, leave the office for the evening, and come in in the morning and you have a really nice quality render. So you're not tying up your machine during the day while you're trying to work. Uh, this bar here will show you your render progress while you're rendering. Um, your render window uh, will also show you that, but you can put that in the background and just watch the progress here if you want to. And then your render environment and exposure will open uh, this tab over here, this um, palette. And we'll get into these settings after we add some materials and lights to the model. You can also use this flyout, this little arrow here, to get to the Render Presets Manager, uh, which we'll also be using a little bit later, um, to adjust some of the settings that we just talked about, the render size and the presets. You have some other um, options down here as well. Finally, we have the A360 tab, which has your Render in Cloud option and your Render Gallery. In order to use either of these tools, you need to be logged into your A360 account, and you can see whether or not you are logged in by checking the top bar here. Uh, I am logged in. I'll see my username. And you can sign out or sign in, switch, uh, switch accounts if you want, by clicking that little flyout. So let's get into the model here. Um, first thing I'm going to do is dock my uh, command line down the bottom here. Now, let me uh, start by showing you a couple of renders that I've done of this model. I'll pull this out and just toggle through a couple of these. Now, these are the, the same table model here. And these are just some of the results that you can get with the tools that we just discussed. Oh, this is something different. All right. So let's close this out. Now, if you notice, there were some walls and, um, and a floor in the, uh, in the render that I just showed you. And we can add those quickly and just simulate them. I didn't draw a whole house or anything. I just drew a couple of, um, I used some of our tools. Uh, this polysolid tool comes in really handy, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. And it simulates walls uh, very quickly. So what you can do is um, click on that polysolid command up here in the ribbon, or enter it at the command line. And then you can pick a starting point. I'm just going to pick 0, 0 as my starting point. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Um, let's go back for a second. Uh, I do want to set the height of this polysolid before I draw it. So at the command line, you have the H option, height. And I'll say, OK. And the default here is 3 inches, so I'm actually going to set that to 60 inches. Nope. Uh, sorry. Uh, let's say, I'll say 10 feet, just to be sure. OK, and then I'm going to set 0, 0 as my start point. And I'm going to draw this out 10 feet. And I'm going to keep going. 10 feet here. And now if I go back into one of my isometric views, you can see that I have quickly created two walls. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is put a floor in here. And for this, I'm going to teach you a new command um, from 
the uh, from the more in-depth um, rent uh, modeling tools here. Uh, so we're going to actually create a surface, um, which I don't think we talked about before. Um, but from here on the surface tab, there are a bunch of options here for basic surfaces. I'm going to use the planar surface. And this is just going to prompt me for two points. So I'm going to pick the corner of this polysolid and the corner of the polysolid back here. And it creates a quick plane for me. And these are basic 3D objects that I can now apply materials to. So now that I've prepared my model, I'm going to come back into the Visualize tab. And we're going to add materials. So from the Materials panel, I'm going to open my Materials browser. Now the Materials browser allows you to search for um, search for materials based on what they're what they're named or um, the category that they're filed under or the type. Um, so you'll see here uh, there's some glass. I could sit here and scroll through them all day, but I know that I want to find uh, wood. So I'm just going to search for wood and it'll filter the results. And then I want to sort them by type. And I don't want wood panels, so I'm just going to scroll down and find something down here. Uh, let's say cherry. And what you can do is just drag that cherry material into the model and now it applies itself to the surface here. And let's say I don't like the stripes. I'm not crazy about them. I can try a different cherry. There's cherry 2. If I filter this by name now, and I go down and find cherry in the list, you'll see all the different options for cherry. So I think I actually want a medium dark gloss cherry. There we go. That looks a little better. And what I can do now is select the rest of these objects. I'm going to exclude the glass, so I'll shift and click to deselect that glass inlay. And now I'll go back and find that cherry and I'll drag it over onto there. Oh. Okay, that didn't work. So I can also, if that doesn't work for you, uh, shift and, uh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, shift and deselect that. I'm going to open my Properties palette now. Uh, properties. And I'll move my Materials browser out of the way. And now under the 3D Visualization category in the Properties palette, there's an option for Material. So I can click this drop down and you'll see that all of the different materials that I've added to this model so far appear here in the drop-down menu. And you'll see it actually changes the entire, every, well, the entire model. Everything that's selected uh, will change as I switch from one material to the other. Okay. So I know that I want that medium dark gloss. And that applies it to all of those objects. Now I want something glass for this inlay. So I'll go down, oh, no, actually I've filtered by wood, so I'm just going to search for, uh, let's see. Oh, I don't have glass in the list there. Let's type in glass. Here we go. All right. So let's grab a clear amber glass, maybe. We'll drag and drop that. And now it takes on the properties of that glass material. Let's find a tile for the floors. Okay, that looks good. And we'll find a paint. We'll find a paint for the wall. Let's take, uh, let's take an aquamarine and we'll just drag that on there. 
and now you have materials applied. So if you find materials that you really enjoy using, you can save them to your favorites library. So if I right click, I really like this aquamarine, I can say add to, and then favorites, and it creates me a, a favorites folder that I can filter to find the ones that I use most commonly. And you can use that from drawing to drawing. So if you receive a drawing and you really like some of the materials in it, you can add them to your favorites library and easily, accept, uh, easily access them in other files that you're using. So let's close out the materials library here. Uh, the next thing we want to do is add a light. We'll get into lights a little more detail in a future webinar, but for now, let's just add a point light. So click on this, um, and it's asking me for the source location, which is uh, where the light fixture actually is um, located. So I'm going to say that I want it at zero, zero, and then maybe 60. And the next thing it prompts me for is um, to change some of the options on the light. Uh, I don't want to do this right now. Um, so I'm just going to enter. And there's our light. Now I don't really like where that light is. So I'm going to look at this in top view. And I'm just going to use my move command, M, enter and just move that point light this way. And let's say I actually want it over here. Okay, I can go back to my home view. Let's pivot this way. So now we have our light. So from here, we can do a test render. Let's just take a look at it from back this way. Um, I do want to make sure that, when I, that I, when I test the render, it's not set up to render for a long period of time because I just want to get a, a rough idea of what it looks like. Um, so what I'm going to do is open up those render presets right here. And I'm going to change this to render by time. And you'll notice that this just made a copy of my render preset. Uh, this will appear in the drop-down list um, for the current drawing, as long as you're using it. And I have this set to one minute, which is exactly what I want. And I just want a low accuracy, just to get a rough idea. So I'll click Render, and it should open my window for me. Here we go. And this will give me a rough idea. Now this works a little quicker. Um, I'm just going to stop the render here so that it doesn't take up all my system resources while I'm presenting. Uh, it does take up um, a significant amount of uh, machine power, so um, be careful if you are presenting. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit now that I have it here so I can get a rough idea. Okay, I, you know, I like, maybe I like that, maybe I don't, maybe I want to adjust the light. Um, Maybe I want to uh, adjust the materials a little bit. Let's close out of this. I'll open up that light just to show you. Um, in the properties palette, you can see that you can, um, you can adjust, you can actually turn them on and off here. You can adjust intensity, uh, you can adjust its color, um, and a, a whole myriad of other uh, settings that we're not going to get into today. Okay, so I'm going to close this out. Okay, now let's get into some of these render settings. So from here, um, you have all of these uh, render sizes and uh, basically output options that are in there by default. Uh, you can open this render, render to size output settings dialog box and adjust any of these settings in here um, to save something, uh, to, to save it the way that you like. So you can adjust the width, the height, what units you're measuring in for your output. You can lock your aspect ratio or unlock it. 
Uh, you can change the resolution if you want a higher resolution than the default 150. Uh, you can also set it to save your rendered image automatically by checking this button and then saving that preset. So I'll cancel out of this. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, where are we here? Uh, you do have the option to render in the render window, which you saw uh, a second ago. You can render in a viewport, or you can also render a particular region. So if you have a particularly large model, the render region comes in really handy. Um, so you can actually select uh, just a portion of the drawing to render instead of rendering the entire thing. I'm just going to leave it in render and window. Okay. So let's open up this render environment and exposure tab here. Um, so in 2016, we added environment, um, image-based lighting, uh, environment rendering. Uh, the render engine actually changed from 2015 to 2016 from mental ray to rapid RT. And it's supposed to make it a little bit more intuitive uh, and easy to use. So if we turn the environment on here, you're going to get a list of preset options um, for your lighting. It's already set up for you. Um, Gypsum Crater, Dry Lake Bed, Plaza, Snowfield, and Village all have 360 degree images that, um, that render in the background of your model. So this comes in handy if you're rendering a building, um, for instance, and you just want to set it in a, um, uh, with a particular background and you don't have an image um, uh, of the site and you just want uh, you don't want to render with a black background or a plain background. Um, it also uses the light from those images. Uh, it's our, all preset. Um, these sharp highlights, rim highlights, grid highlights, cool light, or sorry, grid lights, cool light, warm light, and soft light uh, don't have 360 degree images associated with them, but they do have that baked in uh, preset lighting in them. Um, so it's just a quick way to set this up and uh, the rotation will change where the image uh, where the light is coming from um, let's see so you can either use the uh, IBL the image based lighting background in the scene or you can use your own custom background although it will still use the uh, the lighting that's taken from um, your uh, the environment Um, so you can click on this and browse through. You can say, I want a, you know, a solid background, a gradient, or an image. If you click on image, it'll give you the option to come in here. And um, I actually provided a, a set of background images for you to play with on your own if you'd like. I'm just going to filter by all image files, and um, I think I picked this one. Um, this is the file that I put in the background of some of the rendered images. Let me get that up on screen here. Um, if you can see in this one, uh, I put a window in that particular wall and set this as a background image. And then it rendered uh, with the image-based lighting here with that background image set beyond the window. Okay. So from here, um, if you do that little test render, uh, set it to about a minute, and um, you decide that the, uh, the result is a little bright or a little dark, you can change the exposure on it just using this slider right here. And you can actually see it change uh, in the model here. Um, for, uh, well, if you, um, if you take a look at that result and you decide that, you know, okay, it looks a little too, um, you know, too dreary or, or maybe it's too, too warm, um, you can adjust that white balance here uh, to get a warmer or cooler feeling depending on how, uh, um, how you want your image to look. So a lot of these uh, render settings are 
trial and error, and that's what I'm trying to get across here. Um, it does take a lot of, uh, you know, let's tweak this setting a little bit, or let's tweak that one a little bit, and test the result. Um, and uh, let's see. Okay, so once you have those settings uh, honed into your liking, you can open the Render Presets Manager and adjust whether you want it to render in your window, your viewport, or a particular region of your file. Uh, you can adjust your size right here on the fly. You can pick one of your presets, or you can create your own preset based on one of the ones that are already populated in here. You can put a little note to yourself about that preset. You can render until satisfactory. We'll just go until you stop it. Um, if you render by levels, these are the number of passes that it's doing over your file. So you can bump this all the way up. Um, I believe the overnight quality does 720 levels. Or maybe, no, maybe it's 720 minutes. Let's, uh, let's check. Um, overnight quality. Yeah, okay, it's 720 minutes. So you can set it to render by time. Let's say you only have 20 minutes to, uh, to get your image out before you need your machine back for something. Um, you can set that render time and then you know exactly when it's going to finish. Um, and then you can adjust the render accuracy right here. Um, so if you just want something low quality, um, just to get a rough idea, set it low. If you want a really high polished image, then set it here on high. Okay, so let's close out of that. Let's see. All right, and uh, finally, let's talk a little bit about render in the cloud. So there are a couple of benefits to rendering in the cloud. Um, I did mention the drawbacks to um, rendering on your local machine. It does take up uh, a lot of resources. So rendering in the cloud takes that out of the equation for you. Um, it also allows you to share your images uh, easily. So let me, um, I'm actually going to open up my web browser here and pop over here to the, the rendering gallery. So this right here, if you go to rendering uh, rendering.360.autodesk.com, it'll bring you um, to this page right here. If you sign in using your Autodesk account, it'll bring you to your own gallery, um, your own renderings here. Um, this is the rendering gallery, so if you want some inspiration, this is a really cool place to check. Um, this is what other people are doing with the software, um, with the rendering tools in um, AutoCAD, in Revit, um, in Fusion. Um, so you can browse through here if you're looking. And a lot of times if you comment on the uh, on the renders that people post here, they'll tell you what their settings were or how they achieved it, um, which is a, a cool way to learn um, some tips and tricks as well. So I actually have my rendering gallery open, and I did a couple of renders for this particular um, uh, for this particular coffee table. And I'll show those to you now. So they show up here in whatever, uh, they show up under the file name that you rendered in. Oh, okay. It's not going to let me do that. This is why I saved them. <laughs> okay. So I had a couple of them. Um, I also did one of the, uh, uh, the little house here to show you guys the image-based lighting. I'm going to open those back up now. Let's see. Sorry, awkward moment. I was really hoping that that would be available. Uh, webinars, there we go. We all have them. I had a few, you have a few. I don't think anybody met, anybody worries. You know, it was working all morning. It was fine, and uh, I don't know what happened. That is Murphy's yeah. Law at its best. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad that I saved some of these photos. Um, I know I bounced through them pretty quickly here. Uh, earlier in the, the webinar, but let me uh,
toggle through them. So this one here, now all of these are available to you if you want to take them. Uh, if you download them onto your machine, it probably looks a lot better than it does through uh, GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar. Um, but I just wanted to get you uh, uh, an idea of what we're working with here. So this is one of those ones rendered in the background. Um, this one was Coffee Break, the Coffee Break setting set on high quality at 10 minutes. Um, this one, this one was using grid lights, that uh, IBL, and this one was a rough one minute. This is trying to get an idea. I didn't really like that I couldn't see the um, uh, the background through the window. I had done something to turn it off, uh, so thankfully I didn't wait 10 minutes to to see that um, that result. Hey, we've got this one here. Uh, what am I looking for? Here we go. Here are some of the cloud renders. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. Um, so if you use the rendering in the cloud service, uh, you'll get an image like this. It, it is free to do that initial render, um, and it'll save it to your account. Um, if you actually want to go through with the full render, uh, you can use cloud credits to do that. Here's another one. I had gone back and tweaked the lighting a little bit and got a different result. Same here. And then, uh, yep, that was the last one. So this one here was the, um, this is that image-based lighting I was talking about. This is the, uh, I think this is the, the dry crater uh, background. Um, so I just mocked up a quick house, and I actually use AutoCAD architecture to do this, and that model file is available to you if you want to take a look at it. Um, they'll just show up as AEC walls, and you won't be able to modify them, but I think that you can add materials to them if you want to play with the materials. Okay, that was another one, another one of those image-based lighting backgrounds. If you swivel the image around, it'll look different on each side. Um, adjust that rotation. And these were some of the settings um, that I had used for that one, just as a sample. Uh, let me jump back in here. So um, here you'll see the options. This is back in my rendering, um, my gallery, my renderings here. If you look at the sample, uh, you should be able to click on it and it'll show you a bigger um, preview. It'll allow you to download it. Um, if you click the arrow, it gives you the option to render using different settings. Um, it lets you take advantage of some of these other um, cloud rendering options that aren't available in the program. Um, there we go, download image. So you can download a small version of the image um, for your own personal use. And then uh, Let's see. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's a shame that this is down. I uh, had a couple of things to show you in there. Um, okay. So I think that about covers it. Um, do you I, – I think I'm ready for questions, Steve. <laughs> uh, yeah, Victoria. Yeah. Um, a few people have asked a few things. Um, one question was is how – and this goes back uh, many steps – but how you got the materials to appear on the legs of the table. Oh, um, what I did. It's kind of a kind of a cheat into probably one of our uh, future webinars, but I'm certainly think we yeah. can show it. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, what I did instead of dragging and dropping the material onto each leg, um, what I did was I selected them, and after this was after I added the material to the original tabletop, so I had that cherry um, material in the file. And once that's in there, any object that you select will show up in the Properties panel here, Properties Palette. And then under 3D Visualization, there's the Material option. And you can click on that, and it'll show you a list of all the materials that are currently being used in that particular uh, file. So these are all the ones that I tried out. Now that You'll see that Clear Amber is there, uh, the Cherry 2. And this one here. 
Um, so I just picked it and it'll change that, uh, change that material to whatever you decide you want. Excellent. There was one more. Um, could you briefly go over on how you created the sun status, or that sun status command? I think there were a few questions uh, on that. Okay. And I think that's, I think if I recall correctly, it wasn't quite working exactly the way you wanted it to work. Yeah, let me check. Um, okay, so the sun status variable will turn on the sun, which simulates actual sunlight instead of uh, man-made lights. So all those lights that, um, all the lights on the lights tab, those different types of lights, those are all man-made lights. Um, so here, uh, sunlight requires a different exposure setting from other lights. Um, I'm just going to keep my regular exposure settings here. Let's see. All right, let's see if I can open this up. Um, what I'm trying to figure out is why the, uh, the background won't come on for me my sky is off and it, it got stuck there. Um, but if you turn the sun on, uh, if you open the sun properties palette, you can turn the sun on or off to get natural daylight or not. And that render will look a little bit different. If you want me to show you um, what that'll look like, let me turn that, uh, I'll turn this point light off. And now I have the sun on and I'll do a quick render test if you'll bear with me for a minute. Um, let's put that on low quality. We definitely don't want to do overnight. Okay, render by time, one minute. And let's just see what that looks like. Okay, so this is simulating what natural sunlight would look like on these particular objects. So if you had windows in a, um, in a, a building or something, it might be a good idea to try this out. Um, let me stop that render and I'll make the adjustment. I'll turn that sun off, and then I will start the render again. And that there is using default lighting instead of that sunlight. Um, it is something that you know you might want to play around with a little bit. Um, if you have uh, if you have a location for your project, um, what you can do is use a sun angle calculator. Um, Uh, to um, to simulate the sun at a particular time of day, or you can set your location um, from here from a map. Um, we can get into the lighting uh, in a later webinar. Um, this is getting a little into the uh, into the particulars of it. Uh, were there any other particular questions about the sun status that were that were unclear? I want to make sure that I answered that properly. Um, no, I think that you had gone gone through that well. Um, there is another question about uh, materials. Um, it's okay. not exactly related, um, but the question is, is um, are there any materials available for better quality of roofing? Um, so maybe hmm. you know, the default materials are what they are. Um, maybe you can elaborate upon that. Yeah, so um, the default materials that come with the program are well, as you said, they are as they are, um, but hmm. so you can create your own custom material. So if you have a, a high quality image, um, you can, let's see, let me open up the materials browser. You could go in and create your own um, down here in the left hand corner is the option to uh, create new materials. Uh, you can create them based on a type or um, let's just say generic material, and this will bring up, oh, come on, don't freeze on me now. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so it'll bring up the materials editor when you create a new, um, a new material, and you can go in and um, bring in a high-res image here, and you can navigate to it and uh, picture, pick your own texture. Uh, you might also want to make sure that you've installed the, um, uh, it's the medium image library, right, Steve? Yes. Yeah, yes, that 
Yeah, make sure you have that installed. It's a little higher quality than the, the but there's a low quality image library as well. It doesn't install by default. No, I'm, it uh, installs I, the add remove programs and add feature, correct? I think so. Yeah, I, I would have to look. I, I, from what I understand, it installs by default. Um, so a lot of these, um, for the audience, a lot of these materials and rendering, rendering is a very involved process. There's a lot of settings, a lot of ins, a lot of outs, and we'll continue to dig even deeper into what these settings are and what options you can have in future webinars as well as materials. I can see that another individual have posted, you know, showing the weathering effect of the sun after a period of time on a surface. Uh, the program doesn't analyze materials or renders in that manner, what you can do is create different materials that show that so you can show the weathering in a graphical manner. Um, but that would go into that customization of materials and adding and creating new ones which will be covered in a later webinar. Yeah, let me see. Actually, there might be um, like wood or something. There might be like a rend uh, not render, there might be a uh, like a weathered um, wood style in here somewhere. It probably Weathered, uh, weathered metal, weathered plywood, weathered field stone. So th there are some weathered materials. Um, if you had a high-res image of something, of like a rendered um, cherry or, you know, whatever kind of wood or, or material you're looking for, if you had an image of it, you might be able to create your own material, which is something that we are going to cover um, in a future webinar. Excellent. I don't see so anybody. If anybody else has any questions, I can certainly feel free and post them. Um, this has been some fantastic information that has been provided. Um, the rendering, the rendering engine in AutoCAD, has certainly come a long way since the early days. If anybody like myself remembers remembers them. Oh, it it used to take forever. Uh, I've been really happy playing around with the uh, the new tools in 2016. It's a it's a little bit of a a change, um, an adjustment to get used to it. But uh, overall, I, I like it. Now let me. Uh, I'm going to pose a question to you, Victoria. Um, sure. As a user who's maybe who's never done anything like this, what would be your suggestion um, if they have a model that they want to go ahead and render? Where would they go for additional information or instruction? Um, and, and uh, just a process on how to get a good quality render out of the program. Oh, so um, the first place that you can go for a workflow is, um, is actually in the program. Uh, if you check out the help, I know Volker is a pretty big proponent of the help too. Um, I put these links in the slideshow, so definitely download the PowerPoint afterwards and check out the links um, for additional information. Uh, if I can get this to load up. Um, there's some really good help articles um, for rendering workflows. Uh, you can also go, here are some of the links. Um, yeah, I would start, I would start with the help and then I would actually use the forums. Um, the, uh, the users in our forums are very responsive. To, um, to how-to questions like this. And I think if, um, if you're looking for specific setting options, if you post your model or post a little piece of your model and say, hey, how do I, how do, I do this particular thing? Or this is the type of image I'm trying to achieve. Um, I'm, people are more than happy to help out. Um, let's see. If you're looking for um, rendering in the cloud uh, tips and tricks, there are some best practices that are also linked um, in that PowerPoint presentation. If you look over here, um, if the link doesn't bring you directly to the render in A360 with AutoCAD page, uh, it's just under, um, it might bring you to the, the general help for rendering in A360. Just go down to uh, about rendering from Autodesk applications and pick on the two that relate to AutoCAD. And you'll get some tips and tricks about the sun 
and lighting and uh, views and materials. Kind of answer your question. Excellent. I, that oh. that was fantastic. That's exactly what I was looking for. There was one more question. I think we have time for one more. We should do the final poll and then you know spend the last few minutes to see if we can answer anybody else's questions. Um, yeah. Someone had asked, is there a way to show a view of a room as it changes throughout the day? So I'm assuming the sun settings entering the room. Is there a way to uh, show over, that? Over time. Um, you. Hmm. I don't know if you can do it directly in AutoCAD, but I believe there is an option to do that in um, uh, with the 360 rendering. Uh, you're, I believe you're correct. I believe one of the easiest ways is to, oh, within the sun and date settings, you can change the date and the time. So if let's say you're going to do you know, mm -hmm. June 11th, you can start off at sunrise and then, you know, move the slider to change to see, and then you'll have to render it each time that you set to show. I think that might be the only way to do it within AutoCAD itself. Yeah, you would have to do um, a series of different renders, right? But I, I think exactly. if you're trying to simulate it, like show it, you know, going from, say, sunrise to sunset, um, I think there are, they're, they're starting to put options like that into the, uh, the um, online rendering. Mm -hmm. There's one more question that just came in. Um, I'll take sure. this and then let's do that final poll and then see what else we can fit in after. Um, does the light property rendered shadowed, no, shadow details still exist? Not quite sure. There might have been a feature oh. in an older program. You, you know, no, I, I think it was there up until last year. I saw, I saw somebody mentioned this I think yesterday or the day before on the uh, on the forum I just haven't had a chance to look into it yet um, I think it might be missing from uh, 2016 uh, I we, think we, we can look both. into it though and follow up um, if, whoever asked the question if you want to email to the um, Autodesk help webinars alias it's right in the chat window um, the uh, the actual email uh, email address but send us send us an email asking us that question and we'll follow up with you excellent well why don't we uh, since Victoria you still have control um, let's launch that last poll question okay okay question did you learn something new in today's session We are getting some fantastic, it's always good to know that we have much more yes than we do no. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and it um, looks like we have another question, can I view this instructional again on YouTube? Yes. Um, yep. I think it was posted earlier um, to an earlier question, but our, all of our uh, webcasts are on um, the, our YouTube channel, and it is called AutoCAD Exchange. Slash, uh, dash build your AutoCAD IQ. Um, you can find all of the. Oh, what number? What number oh, are we on now? This one's Victoria? thirty-nine. Thirty-nine with thirty-nine videos 30, up 30. there. So this will be available in a couple of days uh, once we get it. Um, once we get it ready to go and uh, upload it, um, you can also. Uh, I haven't uploaded them yet, but I will right after the webinar. Um, You'll have access to all the files that we worked with today. If you want to, um, if you want something to start with, um, while you start to explore rendering in uh, in AutoCAD. Okay, um, I'm going to. There's a few more things on the on the presentation I'd like to show, so I'm going to. Oh, yep. Take you can control. take control. Go for it. Well, it looks like we had 98% learning something new today, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we would want to see. To can you uh, make me presenter? I don't know if I'm, oh. my screen is being shared yet. No, 
now. I think you have. I think we have some technical yeah, difficulty, I, but you know. I think you. Uh, I think you have control yeah, C. Um, it's displaying the okay. poll right now, so you might need to switch to your screen. Hmm. Yeah, for some reason, it's not showing, but we oh. are at the top of the hour. Um, just to let you know that um, there are additional resources that will be posted up um, on the website as well as our coming attractions. Um, next week we'll be doing uh, external references and as always things may change but then we'll do some more modified commands. There will be no webinar during the 4th of July week so July 2nd we'll be taking a day off and then um, the week after we'll go back into this third dimension series and we'll be uh, working on scratching on the surface so AutoCAD surfaces. We. Uh, we thank you for your time, we appreciate your participation, and look forward to seeing you again. Yes, thank you very much. See you next week.